Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC18 in Dallas, Texas, and today I'm here with Phil from Tyan. Phil, thanks for having me. Are you having a good show so far? Absolutely. This has been a great show. We've been here since about 10 o'clock in the morning, and it's the booth placement is great, the products are great, and the crowd has been great so far. Okay, that sounds good. Well, let's start beginning for folks that might not know. Who is Tyan and who do you help? All right, Tyan, we've been around since 1989, so we've been around for quite a while now. We serve the channel, so we make server products, and that spans bare bone systems, that spans motherboards, and we focus on Intel platforms as well as AMD. AMD's been out for a while, <laughs> but they're back, and they're back in a big way. So the AMD Epic architecture is something we're focusing on. So today, we have quite a few things on display here. I've got uh, single socket AMD Epic, dual socket AMD Epic, I got motherboards and bare bone systems. And they span uh, high performance computing and server storage kind of applications. For folks who might not know, what are the advantages of the Epic architecture from, from your point of view? AMD Epic is very interesting. It kind of frees the PCI Express bus. You know, for the longest time, you've had to have a dual socket for a good amount of PCI Express lanes. And there, we're at the crossroads of a few interesting technologies, a few merging things. Uh, NVMe storage, so you don't know, it's a PCI Express device. It takes four PCI Express lanes. So if you want a good chunk of NVMe for fast local storage, you have to have a lot of local PCI Express lanes. Um, accelerated computing with GPUs and things of that nature also take a ton of PCI Express lanes. So you no longer need two processors for that. The AMD uh, Epic architecture gives you 128 lanes for a good chunk of NVMe and a good amount of uh, local GPU capacity. Uh, don't we have a lot of memory channels too for good uh, back and forth there? Absolutely, yeah. So we're up to eight memory channels now with the AMD Epic architecture. And so AMD gives us uh, eight memory channels. You can do two DIMMs per channel. So on a single socket, that's up to two terabytes of RAM. If you go to dual socket, <laughs> we're up to four terabytes. And that's, they used to be four to eight socket territory. So we have a lot more memory throughput of the channels as well as much more capacity. That's exciting. Well, hey, can we take a look at what you got here? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So this one here, uh, bear with me with my, uh, with my part naming, but uh, this is a TN70A B8026. This is a single socket uh, storage server to find for, uh, designed for software-defined storage. I've got a couple different options. Uh, one is all SATA with uh, 24 SATA bays up front, um, 16 more connected, uh, eight ports are designed for like an HBA. Um, I also have a uh, hybrid version that gives us eight NVMe and 16 SATA bays, and I also have an all NVMe version as well. What kind of application space are you seeing as interested in this particular, I'm curious. Mostly software fine storage, yeah. because it's a lot of throughput and a lot of lanes. And you could do things with JBODs, you could do things like external storage enclosures, but because you have the x86 processor, you can do, you're, you're open to a whole world of standard off-the-shelf software that runs on it. And uh, again, since the processor is kind of just a compute hub or just an IO hub in this application, you don't need to go crazy with a very expensive uh, uh, processor setup. You can get a single socket system and just a ton of drives and memory and, uh, and uh, networking. Very cool. So yeah. what else we got here? Phil. So this one here is the same motherboard, so it's our 8026 motherboard. The platform itself we call the GT62F B8026. Uh, the first half is the chassis name, the second half is the, the motherboard basically. But uh, essentially it's a 1U software defined storage server um, with a little bit tighter packaging, whereas the previous system was a 2U. This is a 1U with 10 2 and a half inch bays. Now we got two different options here. We've got all SATA, we've got all NVMe. And <laughs> it's very easy to Outkick your coverage with AMD Epic. It's really easy to do something where you have too many NVMe drives and not enough networking. This is an ideal package for it because you have two by 16 PCI Express slots, you have no CP LAN mezzanine, and you have 10 NVMe bays. So you can match your networking with your storage. You can get 200 gigabits of networking for two to 300 gigabits of uh, NVMe. So it's a balanced, a well-balanced system. Okay. What do we got here? It looks like a lot of NVMe happening here from what yeah. I could tell. Yeah. <laughs> so this system is interesting. I've got uh, 26 two and a half inch bays in the front. Uh, one is uh, missing right now, it's broken, so I just threw it out. But yeah. We have 24 uh, standard uh, uh, 15 millimeter two and a half inch drives and two seven millimeter slim uh, two and a half inch drives. So the thing here is we can do all SATA, or we can do all NVMe, or we can do a hybrid with uh, some NVMe and some SATA, depending on what your application is. Um, as you add NVMe bays, since they are PCI Express devices, you use slots up on the back. So depending on what kind of networking you need, and what kind of expansion capabilities you need, we can match the storage subsystem meets your uh, your use case. Yeah, yeah, a lot of DRAM slots here. I mean, crazy. We just talked about that, so yeah. it, absolutely. It's uh, an example of what you can do with the AMD Epic architecture. 
You know, uh, eight eight channels per socket, two sockets. We've got sixteen memory channels, <laughs> sixteen channels and two dims per channel because of thirty two dim slots. So four terabytes of RAM. You know, we used to have quad and eight socket systems that had less slots than this. Yeah, but at big ticket prices, I would <laughs> Absolutely, imagine. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what's the end one here? Yeah, finally. So this is more on the compute side. Uh, we are at Supercomputing, so this is a little more focused for the uh, compute side of the house today. This is a 1U uh, single socket AMD Epic server, and it gives us some interesting uh, expansion cap uh, capabilities here. I can do four double wide GPUs, or I can do six single wide GPUs. There's actually seven PCI Express by 16 slots in this thing. Um, so we're, we have a, a, a slot here by 16, that's good for your high-speed networking. You can put your EDR in Finiband, you can put your 100 gigabit Ethernet. And the other four bays are for your, uh, for your uh, GPU accelerators. And if you're not aware, with AMD Epic, there's four processor dies. Each die has memory and PCI Express. So data locality is something you have to be aware of. And this lets me configure it differently. So I can either do two GPUs on two dies or one GPU per die. Some applications like to be load balanced to where you have one GPU per processing die. Yeah. Some of them like better if you have uh, pairs of process, uh, GPUs on each uh, processing die. So this lets us change the configuration to, to best match whatever your application workload is. Like a machine learning kind of box to me. Absolutely. Machine learning, uh, deep neural networks, artificial intelligence. There's a lot of uh, emerging workloads that depend on GPUs and this is going to get it out there with no switches with the AMD Epic processor, and it's, it's a good, tightly packaged uh, deployment for those kind of uh, workloads. Well, Phil, I want to thank you for sharing. It's, it's great to see this span of products based on Epic, and it seems like they're going to continue to innovate here in the HPC space. So Absolutely. great job. Yeah, thank you very much.